All right, welcome folks. Mill Spec Osmic here. This is going to be your Monkey Minute for this Sunday, February 13th, 2022, uh, as we get into this. And now, um, you know, this Matthew 24 world that we're living in just becomes more and more apparent as the days go on. And uh, just remember, faith over fear. Don't, uh, don't let these things worry you. I'm going to show you some things that are a little bit upsetting and alarming, but um, I will tell you that at the end of the day, just remember, God has a sovereign plan, and this is all part of it. And so if you read your Bibles, you know um, that the things that we're seeing are actually called out and expected. And uh, we're told about these things in advance so that when they take shape, that we see who is in control of this ultimately. Okay, so don't lose faith. All right, so hey, listen, this is one that we talk about from time to time. It's about Google. It's about the mass surveillance that's going on around our planet and uh, the U.S. kicked it off with DARPA creating Google and Facebook and 23andMe and Ancestry.com and in, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, all of these social media platforms. And then, of course, they tie them all to this little device in our hands and they are tracking everything we do. But let me tell you. It goes far beyond this little device in your hands. I'm going to show you some things today that are going to make you really stand up and pay attention. All right. So uh, this this is an article that talks about the U.S. states that are actually fighting back against Google and their secret tracking uh, that they've been doing. Now, this has been going on since at least 2014. So just remember that this stuff was all implemented back around 9-11 and when G.W. Bush implemented the Patriot Act. And uh, from that point on, uh, they began spying on us uh, with no limits, okay? And so as we watch this one, I want to show you, this is another article uh, that the CIA is actually collecting a trove of data from uh, mass spying on Americans. And this is coming from a U.S. senator. Well, I tell you this, uh, when I show you what is going on out here and I show you actually the balloons that are just over it, uh, over the United States, you're going to see that, yeah, they are indeed collecting on a regular 24 seven, uh, basis. So, uh, check this out. Now this is a graphic I put together just because I wanted to kind of simplify it in terms of, of the aircraft that are out there, their capabilities. Um, but I also wanted to show you their range when it came to spying on us. Okay. Now you're going to notice at the very top is a mill and tell balloon. Those are the old Google loon balloons. Um, those have since uh, transitioned over to the mill intelligence community. Uh, they're no longer Google loon balloons. They don't support it anymore. Um, Raven Aerospace is the one that manufactures these and launches them. But let me tell you, I had to do some digging to find out the range on these loon balloons. 2,500 mile radius. All right, that's just one balloon. So if you've got 15 or 20 balloons, like I'm going to show you here in a minute, that are over the United States, uh, you're going to see that there is pretty much no, no hiding from these things, okay? They are up right now as we speak, coast to coast, all right? Sitting anywhere from 60 to 85,000 foot, uh, just hovering around over strategic areas. And so now the next one down, I just wanna show you too, is that Q4 Global Hawk. We see this one kind of bouncing around off the East Coast. We see it collecting data over in Ukraine right now. That dude, when it's flying, you could go either direction, 1,500 mile radius, all right? They say that that thing can cover 40,000 square miles of Intel recon and surveillance in about, uh, tw about 18 hours. So uh, it cruises at around 50, 60,000 feet, um, and it data collects not just pictures and images, but it grabs everything in the air. It's listening to communication. Same thing with the mill Intel balloons. Um, and so 1500 mile radius. Okay. Now the next thing too, is the YouTube dragon lady. Now I'm not a hundred percent, uh, sure on the radius on this one, but I just kind of fit it in there about a thousand, uh, mile radius, uh, just because it is a lot like the global Hawk in terms of its capabilities. It runs around 60 to 80,000 foot. It's up there. I mean, the guy wears an astronaut suit to fly it. Then you get into this E3 Sentry. Now these are AWACS. They are used for controlling air traffic control, but I will tell you, they have the ability to spy. I didn't know that until I talked to a former E3 Sentry pilot. Um, and this guy basically backfilled me on everything and it really opened my eyes. But about 500 miles, I'm guessing, uh, just based on the data that I was able to find. Again, they cruise around 30, 40,000 feet. So typically they are doing air traffic control. However, if they decide to go downward and you see that tight circle, they're doing data grabs off of towers. Okay, so they're man in the middle. 
um, with a very large range compared to your normal man in the middle aircraft, okay? Now, this one really got my attention. The R-135, we see them flying over um, the Balkans and the Black Sea and Ukraine and that area right now, but they also fly over the United States regularly, okay? Now, this intel, in terms of what I could find on them, is very, uh, it was very difficult to find. I had to actually dig around to find something that would give me an indicator. Um, so I found an article and it actually said that this aircraft has the ability to track an object the size of a soccer ball from 300 miles away. Now, think about that, okay? Um, it cruises around at 30, 40,000 foot uh, flight level. And um, it's pretty much, you can see them doing, they, I mean, they do work almost every single day over the United States. So they are definitely gathering intelligence. They grab everything from communications to uh, mapping out ground uh, objects, right? Everything from vehicles to houses to uh, everything. It's really set up to do a battlefield assessment, um, but it is a spy craft and a very uh, strong and elaborate one at that, okay? Now, the little one here, I just put a PC-12. It could be a Dash 8. It could be anything, but this is really just kind of to show you that the little man-in-the-middle technologies, what we talk about, dirt box and stingrays, uh, they have a range of about 20 miles. So when you see the little planes that are doing that perfectly round, tight circle, uh, they are basically uh, grabbing cell tower data. They become the cell tower, and your phone is then connected to them. And um, usually they're around the 12,000 to 15,000 range. These are the ones that are little surgical deals that pop in. Nobody knows they're there, right? So anyway, I wanted to point that out because as we watch these planes fly around in our, in our sit reps, uh, you now have a better idea of the range of collection, okay? And uh, it's quite staggering, uh, to say the least, all right? Those balloons are really what gets you. Now, check this out. I'm going to show you over here on Skyglass. These are the current balloons that are up and about right now. Now, these show at ground level. I don't know that that is 100% accurate. I think uh, we've seen them from time to time bounce ground level all the way up to 80,000 feet in a matter of seconds, which isn't accurate. So... Not sure on the data, but you can see they are up there. These are high flyers. This one here is at 90,000 feet. Let me update my chart. But that one balloon right there has the ability at 90,000 feet to gather data coast to coast on the US. In fact, if it's offset, it's actually grabbing data probably out here over the water as well. So, but you can see with this amount of spy balloons, and those are nothing but spy balloons, that they are, they are very well uh, entrenched uh, in our sky, okay? And so uh, this, the reason we're able to capture these, by the way, uh, is because this is crowdsourced data. There are people with antennas out here on their house that are plugged into the Open ADSB Exchange network, and they are the ones that are capturing these. And so if you look at my list, most of these that I have on here right now, these are all spy craft that are out, everything from UAVs. Now, they're not up flying right now. Only the ones that are in white are flying. Um, but even in Germany, they've got these two, okay? So, but that just goes to show you the amount of aircraft that are watching over us 24-7, uh, folks, 24-7. And they are collecting everything. Uh, every time you talk on your cell phone, it's grabbing that data. So, um, all right, now let's get on over to the next object we need to really be paying attention to because you know we already have supply chain issues uh, that we're dealing with and shortages, okay? Now, something I've been covering for at least two years now are the fact that we have droughts that are setting in place that are killing our crops. When you don't have crops, you don't have food, okay? And I wanna point this out. It looks like we've got another stage set or La Nina. Now, you may have heard of El Nino. Um, that's kind of the smaller version of this. Uh, El Nino happens every seven years, uh, which is a kind of an interesting deal, right? But La Nina is basically getting ready to uh, drop in over us again, and it's basically going to create uh, increased drought conditions across the United States. And so I uh, just want to point that one out that that is uh, not good, okay? And so... Um, so more drought coming. Uh, here's another one too. Just want to show you over 90% of the Utah currently is in severe drought. Now this is winter times is when you get a lot of snow melt and things like that or snow uh, and storms coming through, which is uh, not a good sign uh, as you head into spring. And so 
Uh, they're saying now that uh, they're expecting things to get pretty, uh, uh, pretty, pretty dire here in this coming spring and into summer um, because of that drought. And so they're saying that basically when um, the wells go dry, ain't nothing you can do about it, all right? So again, this is going to be a crop impactor, all right, for sure. Uh, which also, when you have the drought, you get the increased fires, okay? All right, let's get over here to uh, surfs up in Iceland. I just wanted to show you this because uh, I've seen some dudes surf some pretty big waves, right? You get out there at Mavericks and some of these other locations where, you know, uh, you see guys dropping in on, you know, 40, 50 uh, foot waves. And of course, they judge them by the backs, right? Not the front of the wave. Um, but this one here, 131 foot waves being generated from the storm. Now you want to talk about weather manipulation uh, and the things that we're seeing. I just watched a video the other day. I actually, it, I got dinged for copyright because I played it. So I'm not going to play it here today. But it's basically a law professor up in Massachusetts that basically talks about all of the weather manipulation programs that are in play by governments around the world. And there's 150 of them, believe it or not. And she stated that the U.S. Air Force said they wanted to control the weather on the planet by 2025. Now, that's about three years away, folks. So you don't do that overnight, right? So that tells you that the things that we see, that we think we see, isn't a conspiracy after all, all right? Um, but this one here generating 131-foot surf. That is insane. I couldn't imagine being in a ship in this condition uh, or living on the coast, all right? Okay, last thing I want to show you this one. This is going to be the high school moves to erase gender terms from their biology class. Um, absolutely incredible. Just remember, God establishes the genders in Genesis. It's male and female. There aren't been only two. And so if you're deviating from that, it is not of God. So, all right. Hey, listen, that's going to do it for a monkey minute today. Be safe out there. Keep your powder dry for sure. Uh, and we'll see you on the other side. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.